What is up guys and welcome back to career mode. This is the Mexican Grand Prix, the third to last episode of season three and uh, I'm hella excited. You can see in the driver's standings, we are right in the mix now, top of the driver's standings in case you missed the last episode in the US of A. So today, this racetrack has always been a little bit iffy for me in terms of pace, but I'll be looking to rectify that straight into practice too. We managed to get well inside the top 10, just a few tenths away from the leading pack there. And um, yeah, after all the practice sessions, I went ahead and uh, did the final upgrade on the car for season three, the uh, a reduction in chassis weight. And um, hopefully that should be enough to get me over the line for the rest of the season, because now we're going to focus on next year, get the uh, research points going for next year, and hopefully make that car as good as it can be for the constructors. Not long now until the lights go green for the Mexico Grand Prix qualifying. So let's get ready and see who has that pole position winning performance in them this afternoon. All right, so here we are for qualifying for the Mexican Grand Prix and heading into the rest of this weekend, it looks like we're set to have a, a very clear and straightforward weekend. No wet weather should be interfering. So that's good on my end. Um, it's ultimately down to us. Um, extracting the maximum out of the car and, and seeing what we can do in dry running. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, we should be able to get out of qualifying one fairly easily. Our pace in practice one, two, and three was fairly solid. So I have every reason to expect that we should be able to get out of this quality session on the one run that we've done at the moment. Now this is Lewis Hamilton completing his first lap in quality. He goes P9 on a set of soft compound tires. Um, it did look a little close for him in terms of making it out of the session, but he did just about do that in P13 It was in the end so qualifying two now and we're going out on a used set of super soft tires that we used in qualifying one Just to get that banker in see what the pace is like whether the track has improved um, Over the last ten or so minutes between the two sessions and um, really just kind of analyzing You know where we stand up against the rest of the AI especially when they turn the week up in this qualifying two session things um, drastically get um, harder as the sessions go on. The first time lap that we set was fairly solid, only just outside the top 10 at the moment, so I decided to, to risk it and go for a set of soft compound tyres to get myself through to qualifying three. I think I might just about be able to do it. On my last lap, the run out of the final corner was absolutely dreadful, and this time we don't make any mistakes. We improve by almost four tenths and get ourselves inside the top ten on a harder compound. You can actually see that we're very quick through the first sector there as we analyze the sector times, and uh, yeah, things are looking quite good at the moment. I still um, have two sets of brand new super soft tires to utilize in qualifying three, so I'm feeling very confident heading into this session. Um, the only thing I I feel like I can improve over the course of the lap is possibly my third sector. I lose a lot of time to the AI in that portion of the racetrack, so I'll be looking to rectify that. Hopefully in this session, I'm running with slightly less downforce than the AI, and I say slightly, it's only one notch in terms of the rear wing, so essentially we should be very close to the AI's pace in this Mercedes-powered car. Now at the moment, start of the session, everyone's finding their feet and trying to bang in the best lap times they can. It's a bit of a happy hour at the moment. We saw Verstappen. Uh, top of the session now, Raikkonen is top, and hopefully we can maybe add to that list and make ourselves top of the leaderboards as we come across the final corner and up to the line. It's only P6, so not the best. Um, eight tenths away at the moment. Um, again, lacking in that third sector now. Uh, two minutes to go in the session. We only have one brand new set of super soft tires to utilize, and we're going to do that now. Heading into turn one, try and... Um, I don't know, you almost hold back through these first two corners and you try and maximize this third one, kind of sacrifice the first two corners to really get a nice exit onto this second DRS zone. And that's where you can really find a lot of time. The first sector for us has always been mega quick up against the AI. Purple through sector one by almost a tenth. Checkered flag is out. We're sitting in eighth place at the moment. And now this section here, the middle sector, is um, quite interesting. Really testing on the rear traction and... Um, you're feeling in that throttle pedal. We managed to negotiate that fine and now the second half of the second sector is all about that high speed momentum and trying to turn in as quickly as you can, really testing the steering response and we negotiate that fairly well. We're not really lacking in terms of uh, turn in around this racetrack but this is the crucial part of the lap where I lose a lot of time. We're purple through the middle sector. Hopefully we can at least maintain the lead that we have at the moment. I always feel like I understeer a lot through that stadium section and through this final corner. It's a real tricky spot for me. I don't quite have the confidence to really fly through here like I should 
Uh, but we come up to the line and we end up in only sixth place on the grid for the Mexican Grand Prix. We were purple through sector one and two. I felt like sector three was actually quite tidy on that occasion, but still, we lost over four or five tenths through that final sector, and I don't know where the time has gone, honestly. The AI are absolutely beast through that final sector, and there's nothing we can do about it. Very disappointing in the end. I thought we were much quicker than sixth place, so we've got some work to do in the race. We've got a beat for Stappen to uh, stay ahead in the driver's standings. Formula One may have been absent from Mexico for 23 years, but after 2015's triumphant return, it was as if we'd never been away. In Mexico, a Grand Prix is more than just a race. It's a celebration of speed and of bravery. There's nothing quite like the atmosphere in the stadium today. They'll be drowning out the cars with their noise as they make their way through on lap one. All right, so here we are on the grid of the Mexican Grand Prix. In terms of race strategy, we've got a bit of a flexible one because we are starting on the soft compound tyres. I almost forgot about the strategy we were running uh, that all started from qualifying. So we can go quite deep into this race and, uh, well, really make a race of things versus the AI who might potentially have to do one extra stop. So we're getting to the business end of this season now. Any major mistakes and um, that could see either myself or Verstappen being out of the running for this championship with only two races left to go after this one. Mistakes, I need to be kept to a minimum. Five red lights and away we go for this Mexican Grand Prix. Wasn't the best of starts and I wasn't anticipating one either to be honest because we are on a harder compound of tyre. Um, always getting a good start against AI on uh, a softer compound is always going to be tough. But heading into turn one, looks like it's going to be three, possibly four wide for the Red Bulls, for the Force Indias. The Ferraris leading the cube with Raikkonen and Hamilton. Hamilton? Vettel uh, leading this race now as the Red Bulls and the Force India go a little bit side by side. There might have been first lap contact again between the Red Bulls, but we will continue on. Up the inside of both Perez and Verstappen heading into this left-hander. Don't quite have the bravado or maybe even the tire grip to out outbreak those guys into that left-hander. Things are going to be a little bit tough for us in the early stages of this race. But as it goes on, as this first stint wears on, uh, we're going to be even more competitive versus the uh, super soft runners when their super soft tires eventually start to run out. The end of the first lap now, and Vettel leads over his teammate, Kimi Raikkonen. They've got quite a stranglehold at the moment, but it looks like Raikkonen actually made a huge mistake heading into turn one. He got the lead back, as you'll see on screen right now, but he just completely outbraked himself, locked up the inside front tyre, and uh, gave up the lead to Vettel once again. But we continue back on the action here. We're following Verstappen and Raikkonen, who is now under attack from Sergio Perez. He gets overtaken up the inside there and now Raikkonen is really having to battle away here to hold on to second place as I dive up the inside of Verstappen that sees me up in a fourth place and ahead of my championship rival now on the second lap of this Mexican Grand Prix not a bad start it must be said when I was almost down in P7 P8 something like that after the tardy start heading into turn one we now find ourselves in a very good position ahead of both the Red Bulls and uh, with the guys in front of me hopefully they can keep Verstappen at bay as well and potentially uh, take points away from Verstappen in this race. We continue on to lap three now. DRS has been enabled. And now this is Verstappen's chance to get back in front of me. I have been very quick in this first sector over the course of this weekend. And it proves true again in the race. Verstappen can't even stay with me. So that's, uh, wow, very encouraging for the remainder of this race. Uh, overtaking may come very easy for us so long as we can hold on to the AI in the third sector. Um, we might have a really good day of things in terms of overtaking. We go purple on the previous lap, and now we're trying to chase down both Raikkonen and Perez, who look like they're slowing each other up very dramatically through the first sector of this lap, and they just... What? It, they, they just battle so much that they force each other off the track, and I just got two free positions. So uh, now we're into second place. And uh, Verstappen is also trying to capitalize as well. He's uh, got around Perez, and now he's up the inside of Raikkonen. That's him into the podium positions as well. So Raikkonen and Perez battling away so hard to the point where they screwed each other over so much. Lap 5 now. Verstappen is still following me in the slipstream, but uh, can't really do anything about it. My Mercedes is just that little bit too quick. End of the lap now, and this is Sebastian Vettel, our race leader, heading in for a set of soft compound tyres to take him a long way into this race. We'll be coming in very soon, hopefully. Right, we have two stops left in this strategy. We have two stops planned. Your pit window opens in two laps time. 
Okay, so we're essentially giving away a two, maybe three lap undercut to the guys around us. This may potentially hurt our track position at the moment, but fingers crossed as the race goes on, we should be able to establish some track position and um, see see how that goes with the fresher tyres versus the AI later on in the race. Felipe Nazar is uh, no longer with us. He has got a engine retirement and there's a Force India spun on the exit of Turn 1. So two separate incidents there. We may see a safety car triggered here as the uh, game audio was having a mare. It, it always does that when uh, someone makes contact with a barrier or something like that. It's really weird. Yellow flags, local yellows through the first sector. No safety car as of yet. And it looks like it won't be coming in this first stint of the Grand Prix, unfortunately. That would have been very timely for us as we actually uh, run over a bollard there. Wasn't intending to do that, but it just happens sometimes when you try and uh, shave a few meters in the way on the way into the pit lane. But yeah, like I was going to say, no, no safety car, no virtual safety car would have been really handy for us because that was our pit window, but nothing happened. So we had to pit under green flag racing, which is... I don't know, a little bit unfortunate, but we leave the pit lane now, and it looks like we're going to be rejoining outside the top 10, maybe in 10th place. It's uh, a little bit worrying when uh, we were battling potentially with Sebastian Vettel in this race. We were effectively second place, now we're 10th. So the undercut that we've given away looks like it's pretty extraordinary, but I'm going to remain positive and uh, hope that the track position comes back to us later because hopefully the AI will be doing one extra stop versus us in this Grand Prix. Lap 11 now, we're chasing down Nico Hulkenberg. He's a, a major player in this race, so it will be nice to get back in front of him and uh, make sure that he isn't really threatening us in this race. Lap 12 now, and this is Raikkonen battling away with one of the Red Bulls. This is Daniel Ricciardo. So they again... Raikkonen, I don't know what it is. He just can't race cleanly and he can't race without leaking so much time. He's done it again. He's lost the position to myself, Ricardo, and the Force India of Nico Hulkenberg. Raikkonen, your, your race craft today has been absolutely atrocious. Okay, so Verstappen, four seconds ahead. That's the effective time that we've lost by staying out just a few laps longer in this Grand Prix and now we've got to chase him down for the rest of this race. Unfortunately, we've actually lost him off of our race radar so I don't know where he is exactly but we're battling away with his teammate Daniel Ricciardo here on the start finish straight. It's absolutely crucial for our race now that we stay in this position or at least try and move forward if we can but we can't be battling away with uh, other, other people not in the championship fight really so I was really trying to keep Ricardo in front of me. I was doing almost everything within the, the limits of uh, racing rules to, to stay in front of him. Um, I think it was just fair enough between the two of us. There was a big squeeze on, but I think it was fair, just. Probably pushing the limits, but lap 16, still holding on to P3 at the moment. For some reason, the pace in this middle stint of the race has been average. Like I've got into the podium positions again, and my pace has just kind of been a bit meh. You know, I can't really catch Verstappen. He's a few seconds up the road, but at the same token, I can't really shake the guys behind me. We're battling away and, and losing time to the guys in front of us. So it's it's very counterproductive at the moment. I'm doing everything that I can to, you know, just get away with the slipstream. is so powerful, especially on this uh, start finish straight, that there's nothing I can really do. I'm having to constantly battle with these guys, and it's really starting to harm my race, especially... It's really puzzling, especially because I'm on younger tyres than Verstappen and especially um, Sebastian Vettel. Um, it's just puzzling that I'm not catching them because my pace in the, the first part of the race was, was awesome and now it's just average to the point where we've lost a, a position to Raikkonen who's got older tyres. So it's a little bit puzzling. I, I will say that I did do a mid-session save and I have this theory that it kind of affects either the player's pace or the AI's pace and... Um, things change when you do a mid-session save. I don't know. Might just be me being crazy, but I feel like there's some kind of weight to that. But uh, second stint is over now. We're going on to the medium compound tyres for the final 15 laps. And it's interesting to note that the engineer brought me in at the same time as the AI for this final stint. I, I could have stretched it out an extra lap or two. I don't know if my strategy was adapted, but yeah, the uh, middle stint was, was shortened by a couple of laps, maybe to prevent the undercut. I'm not too sure. I don't remember a strategy change, but... We'll carry on. Uh, lap 24 now, chasing down Nico Hulkenberg. 
and uh, we'll see what we can do up against him. Everyone pretty much is on the medium tyres, um, same age tyres as well, and uh, we look to be a little bit quicker, a little bit more competitive in this stint of the race, which is interesting because in this stint, I didn't do a mid-session save. I did it for the start of the soft compound stint in the last one. So, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that up for debate in the comments, whether you feel like the mid-session save does anything for your pace. But lap 27, uh, we got in front of Hulkenberg. We're trying to chase down Raikkonen, and uh, here he goes again with uh, Hulkenberg up the inside on the start finish straight. Uh, the Force India is one of the quicker cars in the field, and um, yeah, when it comes to battling, it, it makes things interesting because uh, I don't have any kind of advantage on the straights. So I really gotta try and maximize that final corner and see what I can do on the straight. Try and weave, try and break the slipstream, do everything I can to keep Hulkenberg at the, uh, behind me. But at the same token, try and make sure I don't run out of fuel. It's always a interesting balance that we have um, in these F1 races, but. Middle sector now, still trying to find an avenue up the inside of Hulkenberg. Maybe waiting for a mistake, but uh, nothing seems to be happening at the moment. Heading into the stadium section, we are fairly close to him now. We've uh, not really been this close into the third sector, so hopefully something can uh, present itself by the time we get to turn one. Here's the slipstream DRS. Rich revs, actually standard revs. Don't know why I wasn't using rich, but we get up the inside, and we are into position five. Despite going side by side through that first sequence of corners, which the AI, like, honestly can't manage to do without losing five seconds or completely falling off the track. But we're on board with Hulkenberg now. He goes up the inside, makes contact with the side pod, and he's spun out and gone into the barrier. So, a bit of a, a late move, a bit of a dive bomb. He knew the gap was closing, still went for it anyway. But uh, we made contact, and uh, I came out the beneficiary of that incident there. Let me know in the comments whether I could have done more to avoid that, whether it was my fault. Um, it's always interesting with those kind of crashes. It's a little bit 50-50. But here we have uh, another crash. This is Valtteri Bottas and Jensen Button out of the Grand Prix now. Is, I don't know really what happened. I think Bottas made contact with uh, Fernando Alonso, and then obviously made contact with the other McLaren Honda, and... There goes Rio Harrianto, the innocent bystander, out of everyone there. And that's a very unfortunate crash to happen on the penultimate lap of this Mexican Grand Prix. And uh, that's the race. Sebastian Vettel, he's won. Yes, Sebastian, yes. P1. Another flag in Maranello. Well done. Grande, certo. Sei un grande. Bye, bye, bye. Grazie, ragazzi. Grazie. So one Ferrari goes and gets pole position, the other one goes on to win the race. And uh, fifth place is going to be for us in the end. Pretty disappointing. That's uh, quite a few points lost to Max Verstappen. Tell me, what was the key to this success? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. So there we go, guys. That has been the race. Uh, Sebastian Vettel, in the end, managed to win the race. Uh, pretty much won it on the first lap by uh, getting in front of his teammate. And, and I guess Raikkonen had a chance to get back at him, made that mistake early on in the race, and he had no chance from there on. He just got caught up in the pack like I kind of did. I, I really didn't make the best of strategy calls. I probably should have pitted when everyone else did for the uh, next set of uh, soft compound tyres. And I think what really cost us today was the, the fact that we had fresher tyres, we couldn't catch them, and um, yeah, that was, that was our race. We dropped down to third in the driver's standings, um, behind Vettel as well, so this could potentially be a, a three-way fight for the driver's title in uh, season three. So, yeah, could be a very interesting fight heading into Brazil. We need a win there because, uh, yeah, we've lost the lead now. I think we're seven, eight points behind Max Verstappen at the minute, so it's going to be awfully tough to get that kind of lead back, but um, that's been this episode for today, the Mexican Grand Prix. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, to see plenty more F1 2016 videos. Who's going to win the title? Is it going to be myself? Will it be Verstappen? 
Or will it be Vettel, who has all of a sudden got himself to the forefront of this championship and is looking very threatening? Thank you guys so much for watching, and until the next video, guys, I'll see you next time.